All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. I am so on top of it. I have the notes ready. I have the study guide ready. And we are definitely planning on Test Tuesday. Tuesday. Test Tuesday. Never mind. Okay, so Monday will be a study day. The study guide I'm giving you today is just one piece of paper that is an overview of molecular orbital stuff. All the other stuff is on the study guide you already have. Okay, so that combined is the study guide. Um, I just have a few things I want to go over today, and then that's pretty much it. So this should actually be quick too. I'm being nicer than I should. We're having a lot of study time. We got a whole weekend, we got a whole Monday, half a day today, it's gonna be great. Okay, uh, before we go into stuff that we're gonna learn, what I wanted to do originally is I was planning on talking about heteronuclear molecules where we have different elements. Um, and I was brushing up on my notes, reading my textbooks, all of that, and even at my like college level books, they barely get into it because it is actually so complicated that the only way I could test you on it is if I just give you examples and then ask you to just memorize examples. And memorizing examples is not very helpful for where we are right now, I think. I'd rather you learn I'd rather you internalize the principles and the concepts that we've been talking about for molecular orbital theory and, and not just have you memorize more stuff because you're already memori memorizing enough for this test, I think. But anyway, I at least want to show it to you. Um, can you guys tell what molecule this diagram is about? Cobalt. No. Carbon and oxygen, which makes? Carbon monoxide. So. We have a molecular orbital diagram where I have carbons, valence, electrons over here. I have oxygens, valence, electrons over here. Yes? I've got some sigma and pi's in here. What do you notice about the orbitals that are mixing together? This side and this side. What do you notice about how they're mixing that's different than what we've talked about so far? The two on the other side can't stop the It doesn't yeah, stop with the sigma. Yeah, there's lots of mixing happening that is more complex than we've talked about. So check it out. This orbital was formed from the mixing of these two, but this orbital was formed from the mixing of this and this and this and this, right? All four of those are coming here, contributing to that, right? And then this orbital is coming from here and here and here. Right, so there's all this cross mixing where so far what we've done is we go S mix with S and I get some things and P mixes with P and I get some things and they stay separate. What happens in reality is as I use different elements, notice how 2P and 2P are not the same, right? Why wouldn't 2P and 2P be equal with each other? Well, something we have to keep in mind is that the energy of a, of a subshell changes as I go down the periodic table. And so what, turn, what happens is that if certain subshells are close enough, they will mix. And this is close enough to this that it mixes with that and it mixes with this. And so I have all this cross mixing that happens, okay? And there's not really a good way to predict what will mix. You kind of just have to do an experiment and figure out what is mixing and then go backwards and try to draw the diagram of what the data says. Since we can't do that, we're not gonna necessarily do that, okay? I'm just showing this to you to show you that it's a thing. So any of you that go on to study more chemistry and physics, you know that it's different and you know that there's more complexity out there um, instead of just thinking that what we've covered is how it all works, okay? So this is just kind of me saying there's more out there. We're not gonna go over it necessarily, okay? There's SS mixing, PP mixing, and SP mixing. So there's all kinds of fun stuff going on. Anyway, okay, let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about what we're actually gonna learn this time, electron configurations, okay? So we've done electron configurations for individual atoms, right? Can someone just spout out the electron configuration for boron really fast? 1s2, 2s2, 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 2p1, yes, right? You just list where the electrons are in the orbitals. <laughs> Turns out you can do the same thing for molecules, okay? So this is just another way of representing what we've already talked about. You can do the diagrams, which will be on the test. 
Another thing I'm gonna ask you to do is write an orbital, I'm sorry, an electron configuration, okay? So let's just do some examples just to get an idea of how this works. This is like the passing you want? It's just another way of representing what we've already done. So instead of drawing a whole diagram, we can just maybe make a list of where everything is, okay? So I'm not gonna draw the diagrams. We've already done these diagrams in your notes. Um, so if you wanna look back at your notes, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm gonna to try to do it in my head, okay? So if I have H2, how many valence electrons are we dealing with in that molecule? Two. two. Okay, so a little side note two. Question is, what molecular orbitals are they in? They're in a sigma. Specifically, a sigma 1s is how we'll label it. So for the electron configuration, we're just going to put sigma 1s oops, as a subscript. Oh, 1s. Yeah, because we're showing where they came from. Um, some resources will put it in parentheses, some won't. I'll put it in parentheses if that helps. We'll just put the whole thing in parentheses. And then just like a normal electron configuration, we just put the number of electrons in that orbital on top. Okay. Does one S represent where the electrons came from? It's where the orbital came from. What was mixed to make it? Yeah. yeah. So what if, Sir. There is, if there's nothing in the Sigma star, do you still want to put it there and just put it in zero power? If it's empty, just yeah. don't write it. Okay. Yeah. Which is just like we did before, right? Like if we don't go all the way up to 7P and put zeros, we just write what's there. But good question. In the diagram, you should put it. Yeah. In this, don't put it. So good clarification. Okay, so what would helium look like? <laughs> Cackling. <laughs> We're dealing with four valence electrons. 1s4. So I'm in the sigma 1s, and I have sigma star 1s. This isn't real, right? Right, this doesn't exist, but if I were to write out what the diagram would be, okay. it would just look like that. Okay. So, pretty, not too complicated, right? Just another way of writing down what we've been talking about, okay? Let's do, I'm gonna go down, I've got like six examples. See if you can do these ones. Lithium, we have, how many valence electrons? One. One for each lithium, yeah, so that one's actually only has two. So, yeah, this is going to be a sigma 2s. There's two of them. Yeah, there are, there are other electrons below that, but we're only doing the valence electrons. So that's why I'm only, that's why I'm skipping and just doing those two electrons, okay? Wait, why did you skip the first center as well? Say what? Why do you skip the first, like the notation for the first energy level? Because we're only representing, so these are bonding orbitals. So we're only, we're doing those. We're not doing core electrons. We're only doing valence electrons. Oh, That's wait. what I was trying to say. Right, so in lithium, it has this, but these are the valence electrons. And so those are the ones that go in the molecular orbitals. So then for boron, my valence level starts on 2s. We're going to have sigma 2s. And then sigma star 2s. And I think it's, is it? Is it pi? Oh, we keep going, don't we? Yeah, because there are six valence electrons, isn't there? So then we have to go to the next one. Question is, is it? Sigma or pi next for boron? No, it's sigma. Uh, oh, it's sigma. Pi. This is pi 2p. I forgot it yesterday. Like that. Guys, we're smarter than three. No. Wait, so it flips? No, so the diagram, so for boron, we've got sigma, sigma star, pi, sigma, pi star, sigma star, like that, right? This is the, that's the 2s, and then this is... Oh, so the sigma level flips down. It switches at oxygen. Uh, 
switches at oxygen. Was, uh, I thought the pi level was the one that flipped down, not the sigma. <laughs> Well, pi and sigma flipped with each yeah. other. So remember, this order of filling is for lithium through nitrogen, or di lithium through dinitrogen. Go to the printer. Yes, for beryllium, it would just be these two. Bond order of zero? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, just like helium too. So it just doesn't bond? It doesn't bond, doesn't really exist. We can make a diagram for it, but that doesn't mean it exists. Yeah. Are you doing like jewels and Celsius? Yes. Yeah, and this is over. Oh, my bad then. Oh, okay. We okay with this? We see how this connects to that? So nitrogen? Remember, we're doing valence electrons, not total electrons. So valence electrons for two nitrogens is 10. So I got to fill those up. Sigma 2s2 sigma star 2s2 pi 2p. Question is, on the pi, how many electrons can I put? I can fit up to four. So two, four, six, eight. You can just put a four there, right? Because we can go one, two, three, four. So that corresponds to that. Okay, but we're not at we're not at ten yet. Two, four, six, a. Then I need to go up to sigma. Sigma two p two. Yeah. Right. Wait. Why doesn't it go? Pi star is after the sigma. It's not past five. Oh, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, good. Oh, good question. I mean, I guess so technically boron. Yeah. Fair enough. Beryllium is included. Good catch. Yeah. Or wait, no, beryllium would just be. No. Huh? There's only two S. It doesn't have a like So you would use this order for lithium. You just don't fill them up. So it is kind of irrelevant, but. If you if you do an experiment and look at the order, even if they're empty, it's still that order. So that's why a lot of textbooks and stuff just throw lithium on there. Oh, not the last one. Okay. So is O2 the same order as nitrogen? No. No, we got to flip things around. Oxygen is where we have some orbital switch spots. So now, instead of sigma star pi, I go sigma star sigma 2p, fill that up, and then I go to pi 2p. How many electrons am I dealing with? 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Then we can go to pi star 2p and put my last two there. Cool. What happens if I have ions? It's the same. It's the same, except what do I? I just take away one electron, or I add two electrons to it. Okay. Let me see if I can crank these out real fast. Oh, we didn't do something. Seven valence electrons for carbon. Two, four, three. Three. Yeah. Whew. That was 
bending my brain. So dry can grow. That's wild. So for oxygen, I go to sigma next, sigma 2p, 2, and then have some pi, 4, and then I fill up the pi star. Is that what's happening here? Yeah. You fill it up and go all the way to 4. So that's not a thing. That is called peroxide. That's the thing. Hydrogen peroxide? Oh, yeah. I forgot all that. This is one of your polyatomic ions that you yeah. memorized on that. Memorized forever. Oxalate? Oh, that was, I kept thinking that was peroxide. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> the oxygen state. Okay. We okay with electron configurations? Yeah. 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 On the test, I will either give you one of these and have you write this, or, one or I'll give you one of these and you have to tell me what it is. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. I've only done pairs. Yeah, I've done huh? I've only done pairs of homonuclear. That's literally it. Okay, so All I can give you are neutral homonuclear diatomic molecules or ions of homonuclear diatomic what molecules. If you like, That's all I'm going to give you. What if you like give us um, uh, instead of O2, if you gave us, well, yeah, if you gave us F2, that'd be 14, right? Yeah. Okay, so we would fill that up. Yeah. What if it would be, instead of writing O2, if we just wrote 14, I mean F2 plus 2? Then it would be the same as this, <laughs> neutral. Yeah. So in the instructions, would I would say, assume that it's a neutral okay, species. Good. Yep, good question. Yeah. This isn't related, but on this page it says like, Soluble in water? Question mark. But how do I know that? If it's polar. If it's polar, it's soluble in water. Okay. Okay. Questions about this slide. Do we have to put the one on it. The one on what? Like for hydrogen. This? Yeah, you need to put that one. Okay. One more slide and we're done. Yeah. Okay. Okay, last thing. I'm bringing this up just because I need you to graduate high school having heard these words. That's literally the only reason I'm putting this on here, okay? It's not hard, but I need you to know, A, there is not, there's multiple types of magnetism. Like, this is what's so important. Yes. Can you erase it? What's the test question for this gonna be looking like? And I need you to know two of them. You know one that I'm not going to test you on. I need you to know two types of magnetism because it applies to this topic and I just need to be able to tell MACC that I told you. Yes. Okay. So the magnetism that all of you have heard of and you think it's the only type of magnetism, but it's not, is called ferromagnetism. Okay. Materials that are ferromagnetic are permanently magnetic. If you just throw it on a table, it has a magnetic field. There are only three elements in the universe that have this property. You can't say that. I just did. <laughs> it's true. In the universe, like we know for a fact. Yeah, we've tested all the elements. Like I mean, you can say the so. universe though, right? There has to be something. On the shelf. There's, There's, more universe. Universe. There's more universes. There's more universes maybe? I should ask Thor to go check for us yeah. over on Asgard. <laughs> If something is ferromagnetic, it means that it is permanently magnetic just by itself. It's named after one of the elements that has that property. Anyone speak Latin? Uh, iron. iron is one of them. What are the other two elements that are ferromagnetic? Screw. <laughs> Not tin. They're actually next to iron. Cobalt. Cobalt and nickel. It's those three. Okay, iron, cobalt, nickel, okay, are ferromagnetic. What makes them that way? Say what? What makes them that way? What makes them that way? The short, unclear answer is the electrons. Oh my God. I can't necessarily explain in a lot of detail because I don't know for sure, uh, but I do know that magnetism is caused by the electron configuration and the spin and all that stuff. Do you say electrons are a lot of No. 
Polar and electron spin and stuff are not the same thing. Who are you working on? Study guys today. We are. Right now. Indeed. Be patient. Okay, Amber. He's ready. Okay, the other two types of magnetism that I want you to know about are diamagnetism. This is a property of all materials. Every material in the universe is diamagnetic. technically, or it has the ability to be diamagnetic, which means that it's not magnetic if it's sitting on its own. But if I put it in a magnetic field, it will repel that, mag that magnetic field. It becomes repulsive to a magnetic field, an external field, okay? Now, if I have, so every material has the ability to be diamagnetic. If it has other properties on top of it, like ferromagnetism or paramagnetism, those other properties overrule this, but this is kind of a latent property of all materials. It's kind of interesting. So if I put you in a strong enough magnet, magnetic field, most of the materials in your body will repel it. What? As long as it's not ferromagnetic. Or so we'll, like not <coughs> well, you'll just get pushed away by it. Um, we just don't have magnets big enough to do that, but in theory, it's a very weak property. It's very weakly so repelled. Like okay, diamagnetic materials have paired electrons. So what I would ask you is I would ask you, is this, not sigma, O, O2, paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Dia. You could tell if you look at the orbital diagram, if all of the electrons are in up-down pairs, then that means it would be diamagnetic. Paramagnetic means I have unpaired electrons in orbitals. And paramagnetic materials are not magnetic when they're sitting by themselves. But if I put it in a magnetic field, it's attracted to the magnetic field. Oh, okay. So like a whole paper clip? Yes, I think so. Although I think a paper clip might be ferromagnetic, but the magnetic domains are out of alignment. Oh. Which is a another thing that's separate. Because I think paper clips are made of steel, which is iron and carbon. But I don't know that for sure. I thought it was really big. Yeah, so anyway, these are, these are the two new types of magnetism I need you to know. I'm not going to ask you about ferromagnetism. I'm just connecting it to something you already know because good teaching. I don't know. Yeah. There's also, yeah, and again, Sneak preview, there's all these other types of magnetism that exist that's kind of insane. There's fairy magnetism, and then there's anti ferromagnetism, and, and there's like super paramagnetism. Yeah, there's all these fun things out there. It's crazy. So let's categorize these real quick and we'll call it good. Why is my clicker not clicking? Um, every textbook ever that talks about molecular orbital theory will bring up oxygen. Turns out oxygen is paramagnetic, which is kind of wild. But the problem with oxygen is it's usually a gas, and so the particles are flying so fast you can't like slow them down enough to see if it's attracted. But if you slow it down enough and make it liquid, liquid oxygen, and pour it over a magnetic field, it's attracted to these magnets, which is wild. Oxygen is not magnetic on its own, but if you put it in a magnetic field, it will be attracted to that magnetic field. Kind of interesting. And the reason it is that way is because if you look at its molecular orbital diagram from your notes, in the pi, or it's pi or pi star, it's got unpaired electrons. Those unpaired electrons are the reason that it's paramagnetic. It's not only an O2, other things with unpaired electrons also have that property. Yeah, one molecule of oxygen. Yep, has that property. Yep. So let's let's classify these and then call it a day. Look at the diagram from your notes. Do they all have up down pairs, or are there unpaired electrons? Wait, so paired with this? Okay, yeah. yeah. Hunter. So will the test question be us like stating the definition of both of them and then just labeling them, or just straight up labeling them? I'm gonna skip this on the test. And I'm just going to ask you this. Okay. Oh, too. I'm just going to ask you to categorize it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Question. 
Yep. So if it's an odd number on the electron configuration, then it'll be paramagnetic. Yeah. Yeah, if you have an odd number of electrons, it's impossible to have them in pairs, so yeah. Or if pi has two? Right. Wait, if there's right. an odd number of electrons, is what? It has to be paramagnetic because I can't make pairs with an odd so number. all the one, three, five, seven, nine. No, 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 no. That's true for one atom, but the atoms are in pairs. You only get an odd number of electrons if I have a positive or negative sign. I'm talking about the electron. Oh, but, but I'm saying that would only happen with ions because these are all in doubles, so they're all going to be even if they're neutral, right? Am I right about hydrogen? Yeah. It should have all pairs like that in its diagram. You're double checking your notes because you take notes, right? Also, remember, we're not classifying these elements, we're classifying these molecules, right? Helium and helium-2 or boron and boron-2 are not the same thing, okay? So make sure you helium keep that straight. Boron is um, Yes, I think so. Lithium-2. With diamagnetic. Most of these are going to be diamagnetic. Honestly, you can't have paramagnetic until you get up to the pi, because then you, that's where you have the two. Yeah. Boron is paramagnetic. Boron is para? Yeah. Okay. I'll believe you. What? So boron goes up to, does it go up to pi? Mm -hmm. And has two ups? Yeah. That's how we know? Yep. Cool. Is this one dia? Yeah. I had the answers on my book, but I closed my book. F2 is going to go up to, that's going to fill the pi star, I think. Oh, that's a uh, diamagnetic. Is, that, is this one diamagnetic? Because it fills everything that oxygen fills. Yeah. yeah. Carbon <laughs> is going to go up to, so sigma, sigma star, pi, pi. Yeah, it's going to fill the pi, I think. Okay. I have multiple people saying this is right. Okay. So there's only a few of them that are paramagnetic. It's like O2 and B2 and maybe some ions. So even if it just... Cool? Questions? All right. Better hurry up. Ben wants to do the stuff again. We finished! Yay! Not excited. Okay. I've gotten applause multiple times this week from 7th Hour because I keep telling them I'm pushing back the test and they just start clapping. It's, it's pretty funny.